from Black Gun to Shaft, from Foxy Brown to Sheba Baby, from Coffee to Truck Turner to Bucktown, black exploitation movies were where it's at. They were where it was at in the 1970s. Now, I'm going to say something a little bit controversial, and some of you may not understand, but the true black people out there will. I believe that black exploitation movies are instructional, educational videos that black people need to watch because these are movies that tell you how to deal with your enemies, and you know what kind of enemies I'm talking about. I don't need to state it in this video. The only gripe that I have, well, there's two. I don't like the fact that black women were being raped in these movies, and some of them anyway. And I don't like the fact that a lot of these black actors had a white woman they was having sex with on screen, even though at the end of the day, the black woman was their main squeeze. Those are the only two things I would take out of this movie that you don't need to follow. But everything else in these movies where it was about the black revolution, it was about black people, it was about getting the man, it was about black love, black women and black men fighting together on the same team, taking down white supremacists. This is exactly the blueprint that we need to follow. I know it's a movie. I understand that. But a lot of these concepts that were in these black exploitation movies were for us black people to be triumphant because we were losing back then. We were losing. Okay. In these movies, we get the upper hand on the police. We get back the bad guys that take out our family members, that take out our wives, our husbands, our boyfriends and girlfriends. The black woman may be raped, but she can get herself out of the situation she's in with a sexual prowess. Pretend that she's going to give her body to the white man and then get the upper hand and kill him. Do some even more egregious things that I can't talk about on camera because they're very disgusting. You know, a movie like Foxy Brown or Coffee, I love Pangra. She's one of the sexiest women that ever walked the earth. She still was beautiful when she uh, got older, okay? Now, the thing with a movie like Foxy Brown, because she's the heroine, there is a point where she is sexually assaulted, but they don't show it, and I'm glad they don't. It makes you angry as a black man if you value your black woman, but you feel, as a black woman watching this movie, you feel empowered when she gets the upper hand and she takes down the, her attackers, okay? So the good, the, the good thing about this movie is that something bad does happen in here near the end, but they don't really show it too long, so it's not really going to bother you, but it does bother you a bit when you see it. But movies like this are a blueprint for black people. That's how I feel. I can't show too much here, but it also shows the depravity of a lot of these non-black males, how they look at a black woman as a sexual object. A lot of these sons of bitches would rape them in these movies, as I said earlier, and they got their kicks that way. They use the N-word all day, throw it around, they're out here beating up on black men, but then the black men eventually do fight back and kill these fuckers. I mean, like I said, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not condoning violence, I'm not going to say what I want to say really in this video. I'm just saying certain things and you people will pick up on what I'm saying. The one thing you can take away from a movie like Foxy Brown, even Coffee, these movies where Pam Greer just epitomized, you know, the beauty of the black woman as well as the toughness of a black female in the days of uh, the beginnings of feminism is the fact that it's the black woman here on screen that embraces her natural beauty. She embraces the beauty of her afro, of her natural hair. And that's why I'm always a big supporter of any black woman out there that wears their hair naturally because I'm not about a trend or fad. I like seeing black women with hair like this because to me it's the most attractive, okay? So not only are you empowered as a black woman watching a movie like this or you're empowered as a black man watching, you know, a movie like Shaft or Bucktown when you see a black man beating up on those, you know, on the man who has been putting you down, discriminating against you, all right, trying to take your woman and rape her, okay? You get empowered from these movies. These movies, as I said, they're instructional manuals for you to follow when you deal with your enemies. And I'm going to tell you, the people who had problems with these black exploitation movies, they were coons. These are black people who said that this is a bad example, seeing black people as pimps and drug dealers. It was going on. It's, it's a fact of life, and it's a part of life. I'm not glorifying that, and I'm not even saying that these movies glorified that. Maybe the Mac, I could say, glorified pimps and stuff like that. But these movies were to be realistic as hell in the black community because that is the kind of atmosphere some of those types of elements of people are in the black community. And we're not glorifying and telling them they're superheroes or they're larger than life. 
But the whole thing is these movies told a story that was true to the black community. We were getting messed with by the police, by white supremacists. They were trying to rape our women, trying to kill us as men. And we fought back. And what and it's basically a story of how we fight back, how we are organized, because there are many organizations in these movies where there are black men that are organized, especially in the Foxy Brown movie, you know, and we took down white supremacists one at a time. We didn't just let them come in there and think they could do what they want. They were afraid to come to our communities. So the black people that had a problem with these black exploitation movies, these were black people that enjoyed integration at the time. I mean, those movies came out in the 70s, not many years before that, when we started having our own black cinemas. You know, they were beating us, they were spraying us down with hoses, setting the dogs on us, they were killing us for no fucking reason but the fact that we were black people. They were raping our women, they were lynching men, they were treating children like they're less than human beings even though they were children. They do the same fucking thing today. Maybe not the hoses, maybe not so much the rapes as much. Well, actually bullshit that they're still they're still raping on women. They're still raping on women. They're still maybe not the lynchings. We're seeing some of that shit coming back, but we're not seeing it as bad as it was back then. But we still see each other, you know, as we look at each other on television, our innocent black men and women. I'm not talking about the ones who commit crimes, our innocent black men and women, even the children, how they are still being treated today. You've seen Jacob Blake got shot seven times, paralyzed. You've seen George Floyd. You've seen Breonna Taylor, an innocent black woman, killed in her own home while she was nude in bed with her, I believe that was her husband or her boyfriend, shot. You see Sandra Bland. You see what happens. You see the injustice that continues. Black people need to watch these black exploitation movies, not only to get a sense of empowerment, get a sense of happiness to see that we triumph over these racist bastards who hate us every fucking day and still do to this day but it's an instructional manual on how to deal with white supremacy it's a what if we got together and got organized okay and we could definitely do it like i said i'm not going to come out here and say clearly what i want to say but you can pretty much decipher what i'm trying to tell you right here in this video so when I look at black exploitation as a, as, a, as a young man back in the day when I was like in my teens and going into my 20s, I looked at it for pure entertainment. Loved Pam Grier, still love Pam Grier. I love her when she's gone. She will always be one of the most beautiful black women as far as I'm concerned, but there were many other beautiful black women out there as well, and there's still black women out here now in the real world, not just in cinema. But to me... As I look at things now, because I have a different mindset, these particular movies are instructional manuals, as I said, on how to deal with white supremacy. They're not fantasy films where, oh, the black people win, and this is how it's going to be. This can happen, okay? We've already proven people wrong on the fact that they say that we can't, you know, we can't support each other when we had Black Wall Street, when we had the Harlem Renaissance, okay? So let's stop believing the bullshit that these people tell us because the only black people that ever got upset are the ones who were okay with integration. They were okay with having sex with white people. They were okay with having those biracial children. They were okay with the fact that, you know, we're going to get our asses beaten by certain white people, you know, who are in groups because they are hateful towards us. It's okay to be called the N-word. Let's pray for them. No. When you watch a movie like this, you see what black people are doing against hatred and against these white supremacist motherfuckers. That's what you see, okay? So I just wanted to make this video really quickly because that's how I feel about it. Maybe you might feel a little bit differently, but that's how I'm seeing things as I go along. Because there is definitely a change, and people have said this already, but I feel it too. I really feel it too. There's a change in the air. There's a change in air on how a lot of black people are feeling towards this situation now, are fighting back now, are not going to take it anymore because we've taken it for too long. End of fucking story. All those people who want to go along and get along, they're falling apart. They're, those groups are falling apart because the vast majority of black people are fucking fed up and tired. They're not going to vote. They're not going to take the bullshit discrimination and oppression any longer. They're going to make things change they're gonna move things along so to speak 
So anyway, uh, take care, guys. I will talk to you soon. I'm not a hateful person. I I can't hate people. I, I just because it's too much of a of an emotion to hate somebody. But I am gonna tell my people first and foremost because I love them above all else. That they need to love themselves. They they need to unite. Black man needs to love black woman. Black woman needs to love black man. You shouldn't be looking at any other person on this planet to spend the rest of your life with to have children with. If you are, you are a traitor to the community. End of story. There is no in between. You are a traitor. Because if you love your black self, you want more black people to be created. If you love black people, you want more black people to be created. If you love black people, you want to support black businesses. You want to support black excellence for your youngsters out there that are making new ideas and, you know, have their future ahead of them. If you say otherwise, if you support interracial couples, you support this idea of this harmony between your enemies and you, then you're a traitor. End of story. We tried that already. It didn't work. Okay? I'm not inciting violence. I'm just saying what I'm saying. And I'll say this before I go. I love you. And I always will.